everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brandon. On this channel, I explore all things anti-aging, including skincare research, nutrition, well-being, lifestyle. If you're into that sort of thing and you want to join me here, hit that subscribe button down below. I'd love to have you here. If you're also into anti-aging nutrition, please like this video down below. It really helps my channel and I really appreciate it. Today I wanted to talk about vitamin A and its link with anti-aging, specifically oral and dietary vitamin A. Vitamin A is a fat-soluble vitamin, meaning that its absorption is dependent on fat in the diet. And when it comes to anti-aging and skincare, you've probably heard about topical vitamin A and vitamin A derivatives like tretinoin, adapalene, and cosmeceutical retinols that are on the market. These topical retinols, retinoids, these vitamin A derivatives that you can place on the skin, they do have anti-aging potential, but little is really known about the, um, the vitamin A, the dietary vitamin A, and the vitamin A that we consume through our foods and its anti-aging potential. So vitamin A includes things like carotenoids, which are highly abundant in plant-based foods, as well as some animal sources. So they include things like astaxanthin, retinol, beta carotene, which are found in plentiful amounts in things like carrots and sweet potatoes, as well as lycopene, which are high in tomatoes. And these carotenoids are enriched antioxidants. So antioxidants are anything that fight off oxidative stress in the body. And when it comes to the visible signs of aging, oxidation does play a significant role in the sort of the downstream effects of, the, of UV exposure and sun exposure in the aging process. Oxidation plays a considerable role in the visible signs of aging. So when, for instance, UV induced photo damage, there's oxidation happening, there's inflammation, there's induction of matrix metalloproteinases, which are proteins in the skin that degrade collagen and elastin. So where can you find vitamin A? Vitamin A is high in, again, like I said previously, high in plant-based foods. So beta carotene, lycopene, these are high in things like carrots, sweet potatoes, pumpkins, tomatoes, even some green leafy vegetables are high in vitamin A like kale and spinach. In contrast, dietary retinol is found in high amounts in things like egg yolk and beef liver. Unfortunately, when it comes to oral intake or dietary intake of retinol, there's not a good deal of research. In fact, I found no studies suggesting that dietary retinol intake through things like egg yolk and beef liver can improve the anti-aging, improve your anti-aging efforts. Things like topical retinol, though, there's significant amount of studies out there showing that it does have anti-aging potential, but there's a lack of good research out there to show any effective dietary retinol on markers of skin aging. So in contrast, lycopene and beta carotene, these carotenoids, human skin is relatively enriched in these carotenoids, and they may have potential photoprotective effects for the skin. In fact, reports in the medical literature have suggested an association between increased photo aging and skin aging with low levels, serum levels of beta carotene, suggesting that what, while it's just an association, this suggests that low levels, dietary intakes of beta carotene may be correlated with reduced protection from UV as well as oxidation and things like that that sort of drive that aging process. Now, what's exciting is is that upon dietary supplementation or just the intake of vitamin A rich foods, beta carotene levels of it in the serum increase. Not only that, the beta carotene that's in the skin also increases. So you have through dietary intervention, you can increase the levels of beta carotene in your skin. So your skin becomes more enriched with that beta carotene to help fight off free radicals in your environment, including UV. So like I mentioned, beta carotene really is an indulgent Endogenous, meaning in your body, photo protector. It can really help to protect your skin. And various studies have shown that beta carotene can reduce the erythema that's associated with UV, which is basically reddening or sunburn, further demonstrating the beneficial effects that dietary beta carotene and the beta carotene within our bodies has on our skin. Also lycopene, which again is that carotenoid that ha that's high. So lycopene, again, that carotenoid that I mentioned that is high in and tomato products, especially cooked tomato products, they seem to be, they seem to increase in the cooking process for some reason. This has been shown to reduce MMP1 activity. So I think I mentioned previously, MMP is matrix metalloproteinases. These are enzymes that are induced by the sun 
as well as just naturally, and these degrade collagen and elastin. So lycopene and lycopene-rich products like tomatoes can really help potentially reduce those enzymes or inhibit it to a certain degree and protect the collagen and elastin in your skin. Do you like all the hand movements I'm doing? Just <laughs> now, like I mentioned previously, retinol, there's not a great deal of research out there to suggest that it's great for the skin, but retinol does help to protect vision and maybe protect your eyes from UV. So it has that protection going there. So I would love to see more research on dietary retinol and its effects on the skin. Given that topical retinol has those significant beneficial effects for anti-aging, I would love to see research out there. I'd love for someone to do a study, you know, something that's just even a small study in humans, hopefully, or even an in vitro study to show some level, or you no, know, maybe humans, dietary intervention in humans, to show some something, you know, is it is it beneficial? I would love to see that. Astaxanthin. Now, astaxanthin, I'm kind of getting into the weeds here, but astaxanthin, this typically accumulates in fish and it gives fish like salmon the characteristic pink and reddish colors. Astaxanthin has shown significant photoprotective effects for the skin and helps to reduce UVA damage as well in the skin. There was also a study that I found showing that intake of astaxanthin or astaxanthin just in general, can help reduce the production of UVA-induced matrix metalloproteinases, MMP1 specifically, suggesting that topical or even oral intake of astaxanthin can, to a certain extent, help mitigate the damage caused by UVAs, specifically UVA. So when it comes to vitamin A, should you get it through supplements or through your food? I personally think that, you know, based upon the research that I've done and the literature that I've read, the beneficial effects of supplements are varied. Some show beneficial effects, some show negative effects with supplements, some show just neutral effects. So I really believe personally that your diet and getting a varied diet with very different plant foods, leafy greens, root vegetables, things like sweet potatoes, tomatoes, um, kale, collard greens. These are going to increase your vitamin A intake significantly because they are significantly high in vitamin A and all of these other carotenoids in addition to other antioxidants, fiber, water, it's bound with all of these other natural you know, nature doesn't make a mistake and I think that everything is bound together in a perfect way and when you get all these different vegetables and foods in your diet during the day, you have just, they complement each other. So I feel like getting vitamin A is best sought through the diet. Also keep in mind that vitamin A is fat soluble so it can accumulate. There are cases or reports of vitamin A toxicity, so you have to be aware of that. So I think taking supplements, vitamin A supplements, you know, unless your doctor prescribes it, obviously, um, you know, it, it's not something that I personally seek out. But again, also remember to talk to your doctor because supplements, a lot of natural supplements, even herbal supplements can interfere with medications and cause issues. So making sure that you are talking to your doctor, even if you are wanting to do a complete dietary intervention or overhaul, you know, maybe talking to a clinician, your provider would be a great first step. But anyway, this is just all the research that I have come across on vitamin A, dietary vitamin A, in regard to anti-aging. It's something that I personally am passionate about. I love nutrition and its implications for aging and anti-aging. I think it's really exciting. It's a it's a exciting, interesting topic for me. So in this video, I just wanted to give you some of the research that I've come across in regard to a dietary vitamin A and its effects on anti-aging. But again, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. Again, it really helps my channel and I really appreciate it. If you like nutrition, anti-aging, skincare research, hit that subscribe button down below as well. I'd love to have you here. So I will see you in the next video. And in the meantime, I hope you have a good one. If you like this video, share this with your friends and I will see you in the next one. Bye.